Good morning, and happy Easter to each of you. It is a joy to see you here this day, worshiping with us as we celebrate the risen Lord. And those of you who are at home or traveling, we are so glad that you have joined us this day too. So welcome to each of you. If you are a guest that is with us this morning, we invite you to take a guest card from our pew rack in front of you and fill it out and then place it in the offering plate at the door. And I think the plates are going to be passed this morning, so you can also put it in the plate as it comes by. Will you please join me now in our Easter greeting found in your worship guide? We will read this in unison together. Christ has risen. We gather to celebrate the resurrection. The grave didn't hold him. He lives. Let us worship together. I invite you now to open your worship guide as we read responsively our call to worship. Beloved church, behold the victory of our God. Jesus our Lord has conquered the grave. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Let this place resound with joy. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Let us bow in prayer. Our Lord God and Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks that today we gather. We reminisce about the past week and the events that occurred and are saddened. But we rejoice this day that your will has been fulfilled, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has risen from the grave and he is alive. And he is alive in each one of us in this place today. Lord, we gather in anticipation. We gather as brothers and sisters in Christ and join one another 
as we lift up our Lord and Savior this day. Be with us now as we gather. For it is in the name of Christ we do pray. Amen. Christians did centuries to go, today we gather to celebrate the risen Christ and to baptize those who proclaim their faith in this risen Christ. Today, Joyce Burke has made the decision to publicly declare her faith in Jesus Christ by following his example and be baptized as Jesus was. Joyce has been following Jesus for a long time but was never baptized. And she has decided that she wants to be baptized and be a member of this congregation. So she wants to be baptized as a testament to her faith. Joyce, long ago, Jesus chose to be baptized. And when he was baptized, a dove came down from heaven and the voice said, you are my beloved. So today, as you follow Jesus' example into these waters, know that you too are God's beloved. I baptize you, Joyce, Burke, and in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. So Joyce is going to light a candle to symbolize her faith in Christ. So Joyce made the light of Jesus shine in you so that others may come to know God's love through them. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we sing hymn 219, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. Please stand.
Please be seated. If I could get all the children to come on down. Come on down. This thing working? Hey, right on. Come on down. I know I look scary, but I'm really a good guy. Hard to believe they let me work with people your size. All right. Come on in. Look at this. Well, goodness gracious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is awesome. Nine, Miss Joanne. All right. Come on in. Have a, sit by Avery. She, she, sit, sit. Ten. Bring it on. Come on. Hey, do you know that one? Uh, yeah, that's my sister. Yeah, why don't you go grab her, bro? Go. She, she might understand you better than me. It's all good, man. Hey, how y'all doing today? Man, what a crowd. All right, so let, let's, let, let's introduce you one another here, because some of you all, I know your faces, but I'm not sure what your name is. So I know Dee Dee, and what's your name? Camden. Camden, and we know Avery. And what's your name? Clifford. Clifford? Clo Clo Clover. Clover. I'm, I'm deaf in that ear. All right, and I got Pac-Man here. What, what, what's your name, buddy? Jameson. Jameson, all right. Hey, come on. Go and have a seat, man. Why don't, you, why don't you put her in your lap? Because if I try to put her in mine, she's going to start screaming. Then I, I don't blame her. All right, or she can just run around. This is awesome. I don't even think I need to preach. I'm just going to let everybody run around. All right. All right so we got Logan. We got Jameson. We got Avery. And, and that, I should know your name. I'm embarrassed. What's your name? Zuri. Zuri? Zuri. So, man, this is awesome. Hey, so has anybody ever said something to you, and then you looked at them and said, nah, no, nah, 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 no, no way. That, that's not true. Unless, unless I see that myself, I'm just not going to believe it. I, I, I got to see it to believe it. Have you ever said that to somebody, I got to see it to believe it? Or do you just believe what everybody tells you? You believe what everybody tells you? Hey, uh, Donya, we got to have a chat. <laughs> all right, so, all right, has anybody here ever heard somebody tell them a crazy story? And you just shook your head and said, no, that didn't happen. Yes, yes? thank you. Yes. I appreciate you helping me out here. All right, so what if I told you, what if I told you that, hold on, what, who, who here likes eggs? I love eggs. I, I love, love eggs. oh, I love eggs, man. Eggs are awesome. Anybody here live on a farm or anybody here have chickens? Okay, well, Our okay. Neighbors have your neighbors have chickens? All right. So the yolk, the middle part of that egg, what color is it? Yellow. Yellow. Do you know why it's yellow? What do they eat mostly? What do chickens mostly eat? Corn. Corn. What color is corn? Yellow. There's your answer. What if I told you, what if, I'm a simple man. All right, what if I told you that in Ghana, in West Africa, the yolk inside the chicken egg was white? Okay, Dita, you be quiet because you're from Ghana. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my crowd here, man. All right, so, so how many of you would say, that's crazy, I don't believe that. I'd have to see that to believe it. Well, I've been to Ghana, and I've seen it. Well, they, they, they have trouble with corn, but the, the main thing that the chickens eat in Ghana is rice. So what color is rice? White, very good. All right, we're getting somewhere. All right, who here likes hot dogs? Oh, I love hot dogs. Now, most hot dogs are like, you know, like six inches long, right? Anybody ever have one of those foot-long hot dogs? Oh, oh man. I, I haven't had one in a long time because I'm on a diet and Miss Sherry won't let me have the foot-long hot dogs. I have, one at, I have one at school before. Oh, man, with the chili and cheese and the onions. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh, God. I, I can, I, let's stop talking about it, man. I'm getting hungry, man. I can't wait for apple blossom. Because what? Last summer I had one at 7-Eleven, then we went uh, rafting. Oh, the 7-Eleven ones, man. Those are incredible. All right, so anyway, all right, what if I told you that the longest hot dog in the world was 3,000 feet long? You wouldn't believe me. You wouldn't believe me? What if I told you that it weighed over 800 pounds and it took 100 butchers to carry it? You would have... Okay, so... Okay, I'm not going to try to explain that one, but... 
But I will tell you that that's actually a true story. It's in a, it's in a museum called Ripley's Belief. Now, the, 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 the hot dog in it's kind of gone now, I think. But it's in a museum called Ripley's Believe It or Not. There's a photo of the, have you ever heard of Ripley's Believe It or Not? Okay, it's a museum where they have all this crazy stuff in there that you're like, no, I got to see that to believe it. It just doesn't make sense. Like some guy that said he had a, had a tooth growing out of his toe and stuff like that. I mean, it's like, okay, I'd, some, there's some really weird stuff going on in this world. Okay, eat your vegetables. All right, so hold on. All right, so stay with me. But it's actually, it was one of those things, and I was like, I had to pull this up because somebody told me about it. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. How the heck did they do that? So it was some weird way they did it. So what if I told you that a friend of mine passed away and then three days later he came back to life? You wouldn't believe me, would you? Okay, so let's stay with that first part of that. Okay, so you wouldn't believe me, would you? You'd say, no, you're, you're full of baloney or you're full of a 3,000-foot hot dog. Yeah, all right, so what if I told you that that guy appeared to his friends and his friends told a guy named Thomas that he did. This guy did come back to life. We've seen him. You know what Thomas said? Thomas said, until I can put my fingers into the holes of his hands where the nails went in, I'm not going to believe it. So Jesus, that guy I'm talking about, he appeared to Thomas, and he said, Thomas. Thomas was like, whoa, dude. And then Jesus said, it's me. And Thomas said, I need to put my hand, my fingers in where the nails were. So Tom, Jesus said, all right, fine, do it. So he did it. Jesus looked at Thomas and said, because you saw, you believed. Blessed are those who did not see, yet choose to believe. I choose to believe that Jesus Christ was born. I choose to believe that Jesus Christ walked this earth, that he loved everybody. And I choose to believe that if you were the only person on this earth, and if I was the only person on this earth, that Jesus Christ still would have died for me on that cross because he loved me. And I choose to believe that three days later he defeated death and rose from the grave. You need to decide whether you believe that because you didn't see it. It's called faith. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for hope. Thank you for faith. Thank you for those that love us, especially Jesus, who died for us and rose from the grave. Help us to share that story by being kind to everyone we see. Amen. Okay, so who likes eggs? Me. Okay, so I don't know what crazy chicken these came out of, but uh, each of you have one. Make sure you talk to your parents before you eat it. Uh, Pastor Christy gave them to me, so it's a weird if you chicken. get sick, it's their fault, not mine. Okay. All right. Let me know so we eat it. How's that for a promo? Me. But I think they're good, man. I, that was a wild chicken that thing came. You, you know there's actually a chicken that lays perfectly square eggs? Let me just all right, we'll talk about that later. Too. Like mine chicken? Hey, who's got a who's got a sibling that isn't here today? No, and Emma want an egg? Huh? Uh, praise God. Okay, so our scripture reading today is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Is that right? Huh? Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Okay, well, shut me up if I keep reading. All right. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, 
and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. I invite you now to turn to hymn 207 as we stand and sing, low in the grave he lays. Please stand. Will you please join me in prayer? We thank you, redeeming God, for the glorious message that you bring new hope out of despair, resurrection out of defeat, and new life out of death. You call dry bones to dance, and you give living water so new life blossoms. You urge flowers to push their way through winter-hardened soil. We bring before you the dead and dried-out places in our lives that through your touch we may discover newness of life. Forgotten dreams, lapsed intentions, hardened resentments, and griefs to which we cling, these we hand over to you, knowing that you will return them mended, washed, renewed, and transformed. We bring before you the places in our lives and in our world where despair reigns unchallenged. We grieve with with concerns for our country and our world where the cycle of violence goes on and on. Point us, O God, toward actions, however small, which lead to a more hopeful future for ourselves and our world. 
Gracious God, we thank you that you walk beside us as we journey through life. Because you were with us, we gain courage to meet the challenges of each day, choosing life and not death as we move through time. As you raised Jesus from the dead, raise us to do life day by day. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brad and Sue and choir, and helping us celebrate the risen Lord. We're so grateful for each of you. So today, I will be reading the account of the first Easter from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outrun, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw, and he believed." For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. 
Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she went, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Will you please pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There was a little girl. She was 10 years old, and her name was Julie. And she had met with her pastor about becoming a Christian. A few Sundays later, she came down the aisle and joined the church and told her pastor that she wanted to be baptized because she was now a follower of Jesus. So on her baptism Sunday, she tells her pastor that she's really not sure that she can go forward with this baptism because she wasn't sure she could promise to believe everything she was supposed to believe forever. Her pastor told her, What you promised when you become a Christian and are baptized is not what you will believe forever. Your understanding will grow and change as you do. What you promise is that this is the story that you will wrestle with forever. The Christian faith is not a simple formula that we memorize. It's not a list of do's and don'ts that must be followed. It's not a bunch of Bible stories that we all learned as children and have never reread them or thought about them as adults. Being a Christian is being open to wrestling and questioning and wondering about our faith and what we believe. We should be wary of those who say that they have faith all figured out. Understanding takes time, a lifetime, and then some. I would imagine that some of you here today are wondering about resurrection. How can it be? Is it true? Karl Barth, a famous theologian, says that what brings people to worship is an unspoken question that clings to their hearts and minds. And that question is simply, is it true? Is it true that God lives and gives us life? Is it true that God established a routine that we call the laws of nature, but then on that first Easter morning broke the routine and somehow raised Jesus from the dead? Is it true that something so extraordinary happened on that morning so many years ago that we can rebuild our lives on its foundation? Is it true? Early on that first Easter morning when Mary Magdalene awoke, 
She felt the terrible shock we all do when the death of someone close to us is so fresh that we have to realize it again. We have to relive the horror again and unfortunately tell ourselves that the bad news isn't a bad dream. We have to make ourselves believe it again that they are really dead and it takes our breath away. Grief is horrible. It's a bottomless pit. Now, every one responds to grief in different ways. Some people are paralyzed by it. And then there are some people that are determined to keep going, to stay busy, do the things that have to be done. They fold towels, they load the dishwasher, they take out the trash, they weed the garden, they go and visit the cemetery. They get up and move, even in the midst of grief, because they must. They get up and do something, anything, because anything is better than nothing. Now that is Mary Magdalene. She got up and let the grief of Jesus' death hit her like a freight train. And then she headed to the tomb. She went there because she needed to do what needed to be done. Now, she was Jesus' disciple. She doesn't appear on the list of the twelve. They are all men. But she appears in all four of the Gospels. In the other Gospels, she's in combination with other women. But in John's Gospel, she's all alone. Every version of this story tells us that Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early on that first day of the week. In John's version, she is the first witness that Jesus' body was not there. She encounters the incomprehensible. What do we do when we are faced with the incomprehensible, the things that make us ask, is it true? We try to make sense of it. Mary is trying to make sense of why Jesus' body is not there where it was supposed to be. If we had been there, we might have, might, might have tried to make sense of it by saying things like, they must have taken him away. He cannot be alive. He must have merely been wounded. Maybe he was never really dead. He must only have been God and not human for humans can't do such things. Or maybe we might have thought there must be a conspiracy to hide him by his followers in order to concoct a cult to dupe the world for millennia. He was never really there. He was only a rabbi or an avatar, but not the Messiah. We can make all kinds of explanations except for the one that he gave when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So Mary runs and she finds Simon Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved and tells them they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple have a foot race to get to the tomb. The other disciple reaches the tomb first and he looks in, he sees and believes, but he did not understand yet. Now, isn't that interesting that he believes, but he doesn't understand? Just like Julie from the beginning of our sermon, who believes, but isn't sure if she will always believe in the same way, faith is a journey of growing and understanding. We believe and then slowly we understand. Faith precedes understanding. It is a gift. Sorting out the details and figuring out the ins and outs of faith come later over our lifetimes. It's like the love we have for a newborn baby. We love him before we know who he will be. 
We love him before we figure out his personality or his quirks or his talents or his gifts. We figure it out as we go along. So it is with faith, too. So Mary Magdalene is slowly figuring it out, slowly figuring out what has happened. She stays at the tomb after the guys have left, and she weeps. She weeps because her friend is dead, and now, of all things, he is missing. And while she is there in the midst of her heart-wrenching grief, she sees a man who she assumes to be a gardener. He speaks to her, asking her, why are you crying? She doesn't recognize who he is until he says her name. And then she knows. He was not taken away, but was raised from the dead. In the faith, In the face of every other plausible explanation, Easter gives us the earth-shattering, life-changing news. Jesus is alive. He is risen. Have you ever wondered why Jesus chose to speak to Mary Magdalene and not the other disciples? Perhaps because he knew her heart. He trusted her to believe the impossible and to understand what resurrection really meant. Mary reaches out to touch him, and he asks her not to. You see, they have met at a liminal moment. He was between two states, and honestly, so was she. The Jesus of Good Friday has died, but the Christ of heaven had not yet ascended. Mary Magdalene, the grieving follower, had only a moment to kneel before him, a moment to be transformed into Mary Magdalene, the evangelist, the preacher, the first preacher. He knew how well equipped she was to spread the word, determined and convincing and faithful. I have seen the Lord, she tells the other disciples, and they tell others, and they tell others, and so on until this day. Or one day, someone told us. It may be good news that we have always known, told to us so long ago that we can't remember when, or it may be it came as a gift when we needed it desperately, a word of hope to end a long night. It is now our work to do, to let the world know Christ has risen. Let's spread the word. Okay, now it's time for an old corny joke. The pastor knocks on a door and hears a woman inside call out, Is that you, angel? And the pastor replies, No, but I am from the same department. Just as angels proclaim a message, we too are in the message department. Ours is to proclaim the same news as Mary Magdalene did. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We are Easter people. We are resurrection people. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, we believe that new life can happen. And resurrection life becomes the daily life of the church. We as a church are about bringing new life to places and to people that need a new start. By working with other churches here in Front Royal, we help to settle a refugee family from Africa, a family who had been affected 
by war and violence. By moving to the United States, they have a new start. This is resurrection work. When we open our doors to Narcotics Anonymous, we are providing a space of resurrection and new life work to happen. This is resurrection work. When we offer a hot meal and hospitality to our hungry neighbors, we are offering hope. This is resurrection work. When we celebrate Black History Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, and Women's History Month, we are embracing God's kingdom that includes everyone. This is resurrection work. When we operate a daycare that provides a safe and nurturing place for 60 children in our community, this is resurrection work. When we open our doors to children, both First Baptist children and children from E. Wilson Morrison Elementary School, to come hang out with us on Friday nights, we are involved in offering hope, love, and grace. This is resurrection work. So my friends, how are you going to be about resurrection work? How are you going to be about spreading the word, the fact that Christ has risen? How are you going to spread the good news? Surely you know people who need hope. Surely you know people who need grace and love. Resurrection work. It is for all of us to be about. And each of us in our own ways, some of us with words and some of us with actions. But we are all called to go, like Mary Magdalene, and spread the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. I invite you to take a, two, a couple moments now of quiet reflection and consider how you can spread the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Resurrected one, thank you for the hope and the promise of new life that we have through you. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing together hymn number 477, We Are Called to Be God's People. During this hymn of response, I'll be down front waiting if anyone would like to join our church and, and would like to be baptized become a Christian, we would love to talk with you about that. So let's stand and sing together hymn number 477.
Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Easter Sunday. We thank you for the celebration of the risen Christ, our Lord, our Savior. It's, a, it's a, the ultimate example of how you gave to us and have given for us so that we might have salvation and, and forgiveness of sin. Now we have collected an offering. We've collected money. We've collected tithes. We've collected sacrifices, different gifts. This week we've had people give gifts of time and service. And we ask that you take all the gifts that have been collected in your name and that you would bless them and that you would use them to spread the good news of the risen Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for just a moment. I'd like to welcome these folks who are worshiping from home today. Um, Jim Fox, Ron Napier, Carl Ponstangle, who says good morning from the Roanoke Valley, Susan McIntyre, and Carol Groves, who says Easter blessings to all from Pennsylvania. So we're so glad that you all joined us. So just a remark about the flowers this morning. We're given, given in loving memory of Larry Stenenbach by his family. So we are grateful for those. And then also we have a rose in our sanctuary today in celebration of the birth of Charlotte Ann Wilson Long, who is the great granddaughter of Bill and Betty Long. So where are y'all? Where are they? They're back there. Congratulations to both of you. She was born on March 26th, so congratulations to her and to your family. It has been a joy to be in worship with each of you this day, and it has been a joy to have lots of children with us. I am grateful for the sounds of children among us. And as I talk about children, we are expanding our ministry in the community, reaching out to children. So today, if you would like, we're taking up as our Easter offering, a special offering that will go to help us in our new children's ministry. Um, we are providing events on Friday nights for children um, at E. Wilson, a couple, maybe about once a month. And it is a wild, fun time in the Fellowship Hall. But we have several events coming up if you look in your worship guide at the end of the month for the children there. And we need lots of help and some money to help provide those. So if you can help with that, we would love for you to do that. Please make note of all the other announcements. Lots of things are going on in the life of our church, and we hope that you will participate in those. And if you look closely, most of them, well, a number of them involve food. So we hope that you will come and participate in those with us. Will you please stand now for our benediction? Christ is risen. So go enjoy to celebrate that Christ has conquered death. Go in peace to celebrate that new life has come. And go in hope to spread the good news. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.